Learning objectives include high-frequency recombination cells. This is another phenomenon or subtype of conjugation, basically, where F-factor-bearing cells, like here, this is a plasmid which we call fertility factor, it sometimes gets integrated into the chromosomal DNA of the bacteria. And once it gets integrated into the chromosome of the bacterium, this cell is called high frequency of recombination cell. What happens is that because this is the same fertility factors, same plasmid that got incorporated into the genome of the chromosome, the bacterial chromosome, it would do exactly what it is meant to do. So it basically can synthesize um, a conjugal base or, or bridge, what we call a, a sex pilus, and then can bring these two bacteria together and can transfer the same genes to the other neighboring bacterium. What happens is that most of the time when this cell, which is high-frequency recombination cell, it starts sending or transferring the gene from this bacterium to this, it does not get completed. That means that all of this plasmid does not get transferred. So this cell would acquire only few genes or partial uh, fertility factors. So it never becomes F positive cell. This is the difference in high frequency recombination cell conjugation. Like uh, I mentioned that the transfer begins from the middle of this fertility factor and some part, not the whole uh, plasmid is transferred. So this is a high frequency cell, a uh, high frequency recombination cell. And now this is a recombinant cell, which still is F negative because it did not acquire the whole F fertility factor. If we watch this video, it'll be more clear to you. Occasionally, an F factor integrates into the E. coli chromosome, converting the F plus cell to an HFR or high frequency of recombination cell. Like F plus cells, HFR cells form conjugation pili, which attach to F minus cells. The cells come together and stabilize, probably through fusion of their cell membranes. The transfer of DNA begins. DNA transfer begins in the middle of the F factor within the HFR cell's chromosome. Usually, the chromosome breaks before it's completely transferred. As a result, the F- cell does not receive a full copy of the F factor. Since the recipient cell does not receive a complete copy of the F factor, it remains an F- cell. However, the DNA from the donor can recombine with the recipient's chromosome, giving the recipient new chromosomal genes. So as you saw here, that high-frequency recombination cell transferred part of its fertility factor. And uh, this became a recombinant, but still remains F-negative cell because this cell is not able to transfer its genes that it required from high-frequency recombination cell to another cell. So that is a big difference between a, a real conjugation and high-frequency recombination cell. Conjugation, this high-frequency recombination and other conjugations through the fertility factor could also be used for gene mapping. Uh, let's watch a, a small clip that uh, would make things more clear to you. The circular genome of E. coli can be mapped by allowing HFR conjugation to occur for set amounts of time. It takes about 100 minutes to transfer a complete E. coli chromosome. Genes close to the fertility factor will transfer quickly. The gene for leucine transfers even when conjugation only lasts for two minutes. This tells us that the leucine gene is very close to the fertility factor. Conjugation has to occur for at least six and a half minutes in order for the LAC operon to transfer. This tells us that the LAC operon is farther from the fertility factor than the leucine gene. It takes over 40 minutes for the histidine operon to transfer, so it must be nearly halfway around the chromosome from the fertility factor. So the process of conjugation can be used to help geneticists map the genomes of bacteria. So as you saw here, that because we know that the genes are arranged one after the other, if we allow these conjugations to go with a limited time or time restriction, after different timings intervals, we can determine which genes are transferred based on their ability or ability of these cells to grow in 
uh, some deficient medium, nutrition deficient medium. And this map mapping has its limitation as well because we cannot map all the genes. We would only uh, target the genes that are uh, that provide some nutritional factors, some growth factors, some amino acids. So all those genes that like this is a leucine, this is a lac operon, this is a tryptophan. So all these genes have to be be able to synthesize or provide some some growth nutrients. Uh, we cannot map all the genes with this technique. In summary, high frequency of recombination is also used as a way of transferring genes from one organism to the other, and this can also be used for gene mapping, although it has its own limitations.